Justification happened by the blood of Jesus, by his name, by his spirit, by his grace, but by his resurrection from the dead. But in order for us to receive it is through faith. Justification, uh, I like the word probably through better than by, because by then puts the load on faith. So the faith itself, it doesn't have, it doesn't do anything. Faith is just a receptacle. It's like that receptacle you got on the wall. That thing is not electricity, but is a key to the electricity. Electricity comes from outside through the wire. That receptacle itself, by itself, you buy it at the store for 30 cents, it has no power whatsoever. But you put that, attach it to that, it becomes a means by which we, we grab that electricity. And faith, the same thing. Faith by itself is absolutely nothing. But you attach that to the work of Jesus, then we can receive it. So again, um, uh, this is so important. So now, the key is for us to understand that the blood of Jesus, that we have been made justified, have been made justified through or by the blood of Jesus. And, and, and the blood of Jesus means more than just the death of Christ. Now, this is very important for us to understand. Religion puts emphasis on Jesus' death. But the death that we're talking about is a, is a particular aspect of Jesus' death. Now, what am I saying? If Jesus was hit by a car and died, and of course there was no car in that time, let's say if he was hit by, a, by an animal, by a donkey. In those days they, they rode donkeys. And if he, if he died, his death would not save us. You understand that. It wasn't just him dying. It was him laying down his life and shedding his blood. It was a specific task, a definite efficacy, if you would. It, it, it had a specific usefulness. It was, a, it, was, it was targeted death. It was for the sake of or instead of, as as. Paul says in the book of Romans. So Jesus' death, uh, Vine Dictionary, W.E. Vine, uh, makes comment on Romans 3.25. He says, Faith is the means of making the pardon ours. The blood is the means of its effect. The preposition en of the original is instrumental. The phrase by his blood expresses the means of propitiation. The blood of Christ stands not simply for the physical element, nor merely for a life surrendered, but for his sacrificial death under the judgment of God by means of the shedding of his blood. Since blood is essential to life, Leviticus 17, 11 says, uh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The shedding of blood involves the taking, or in his case, the giving up of life in sacrifice. It is not merely that death takes place, but it is the giving up of a life as a victim or sacrifice in expi expi expiation of sin, dealing with sin. This was significance of the sacrifice of victims under the old covenant. Now Jesus says this, notice in Matthew chapter 26, and uh, in verse 28, uh, Jesus talks about his death. And here we got, uh, somehow the computer is very slow to now. Here it is. It says, uh, Jesus says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is, notice here, shed for, shed for many for the remission of sins. The blood is not spilled. Uh, the blood is shed. Uh, meaning, he gave it up. He said it. He said, no one takes my life. I am laying it down. So it was a specific targeted death. It had a purpose. God used his death instead of, in the place of, 
you and I. That's very important for us to understand. So that, so his blood had a target process. Now, you know, uh, I've heard many Christians and out of ignorance, I used to do that too. We apply the blood of Jesus for this. We apply the blood of Jesus for that. Uh, people do funny stuff, not understanding uh, the scripture. Uh, really, the blood of Jesus, uh, you cover the blood of Jesus over your finances, for instance. That's, that's sacrilegious. The blood of Jesus wasn't poor or wasn't shed so that your money may be safe. The blood has a target. We should do a study on the blood of Jesus uh, sometime and get this with, uh, because the Bible is a blood-stained book. And so we need to understand the purpose of the blood of Jesus. Why was Jesus' blood shed? Where, what were the targets? Well, one of them we're discussing tonight is the blood of Jesus was targeted for justification. The blood was shed instead of my blood being shed, instead of me paying the price, his life was given up. Uh, so it had, uh, it had a, a specific plan God had for the blood of Jesus. Uh, let's look at some of these Bible verses. For instance, in Acts chapter 20, uh, in verse 28, uh, we are uh, going to look at this verse. Uh, number one, the blood has a... Let me write this down so this, while this is loading. I do not understand why is this so slow. Must be our internet today. Uh, but let me write this down. Uh, the, let's see here. Let's, uh, let me shut a couple of these things down. Maybe help us uh, in the process somehow. It must be downloading something or so. And that's why it's... Uh, uh, it's very slow. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's go back to our board here, and we're going to choose a new page, and we're going to talk about uh, the, the blood of Jesus. Number one, the blood has a possessive power. The blood of Jesus has a possessive power. Let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, uh, let me see here. The blood of Jesus has a possessive power. Uh, let's see, number one. Number one. Uh, okay, it's not cooperating with me tonight. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 20. Let's go back to the Bible. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves... And to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Paul is talking to the elders of the church in, in, the, in, in Ephesus. To shepherd the church of God, which he, God, purchased with his own blood. God purchased the church, the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, purchased uh, his body, the church, with his own blood. So, number one, the blood has a possessive power. It has buying ability. It bought the church, the body of Christ, for himself. A possessive action of God, the power of his blood. Now, don't go and apply that blood of purchasing stuff. Don't, don't be a fool now and act uh, religious, but understand the purpose of each uh, 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 usefulness or, or, or power or efficiency of the blood. Number two, Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 13, Ephesians 2, 13, and, it, and, and, and write this down. My board is not working. Uh, the blood has a drawing power. The blood has a drawing power. We see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who uh, once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So we are brought near to God and to the family of God. 
as referring really to the Jewish people. We've been brought near, we who were foreigners or Gentiles or uh, heathen, we've been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the blood of Jesus has the power to bring us near. You know, in uh, human uh, celebration of various uh, feasts, uh, always have various uh, places for people. Important people always put up up front. You know, have you ever gone to one of these uh, big conferences, charismatic conferences, and they have these big preachers, and they got their bodyguards and all of that, you know, the, the entourage, and they've got, they always put them up front. They used to put them on the platform. Now, in the charismatic, they put them lower section. But it's always up front. It's for all the big names, you know, and, and, and these big dudes and dudettes. <laughs> when you come in there as nobody, I remember there was a conference uh, in those days in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in Carlton Pearson. We had to wait in line before they give us a seat in the upper section. Now, the first ones were for all the big names. We were nobody, so, but because they recognized us, recognized us as preachers, so they would put us in that upper section. But before we get there, we would have all of these guys that were master ceremonies. These guys were MCs and they were ushers, master ushers. And they would come in there and get our name and then they would go talk to somebody and that somebody would recognize. They come back and they say, you come with us. And they follow us very politely and lead us to our seats and give us <laughs> two seats with me and Marilyn in the back section of that upper section. <laughs> you know, and we were so excited that we were sitting in that section. And so, um, uh, what, what does the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus came and took us and, 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 and from the back of the line, all the way back, and, and when we were nobody, we had no nothing, and brought us all the way and put us with the greatest of the greatest, and put us with uh, He Himself, God Himself, and His saints. So the blood of Jesus has the drawing power. Now, notice Hebrews chapter 10. The blood of Jesus has an access uh, power. It, it can access the throne of God. It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. Uh, can you imagine the Old Testament? Nobody could approach the presence of God. Nobody could come into the tabernacle of Moses, the Holy of Holies. Not even Moses himself. Not even the high priest who was, he was the only one who had access once a year. And he had to come with the blood of the atonement on the day of atonement. Leviticus chapter 14, you read about that. But uh, the Bible says through the blood of Jesus. We're nobody. I mean, we were nobody. God grabbed that blood, came and sought us and took us and took us all the way. And now we have access beyond the veil to the very presence of God himself. Can you imagine the power of that blood? What that blood can do for us. Take us into the very presence of God. Not only that, just coming in with fear and trembling like the old high, high priest uh, performed his, his duties in, the high, in that day. But uh, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Before God himself, boldly and access uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, number four, look at... Uh, Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 19 through 20. Colossians 1, 19 through 20. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross. God made peace, you know, blood of people usually uh, declares war. If you shed the blood of somebody important in Islam, they killed uh, the fourth caliph 
Imam Ali, and a war broke out between two major Islamic factions or families. And uh, for centuries they have been killing one another because one blood was shed. Can you imagine? Millions upon millions of Muslims have killed one another, and still do. Look at Iraq, division between Shia and Sunni. Every week you almost hear on a weekly basis the bomb exploded by Sunni people in the Shiite quarters. They're killing one another, their own countrymen, because they believe in another section within that faith. The blood of one man was shed within Islam, and millions are being sacrificed as the blood of that man. But the blood of one man, Jesus, was shed. And look at what has happened to us, that God has made peace through the blood of all that animosity, you know, religion is contrary to the work of Jesus. Jesus' blood was shed, peace was made. Religious men's blood was shed, war broke out for 1,500 years. Think about the curse that is within Islam and within religions and within human philosophies. They kill one person, one country from another. Look at all these uh, world war we've had. I think it was the First World War because a prince in Russia died or someone and in Germany, the Second World War, and broke out war, millions of people died. Uh, but one man, precious before God, he died and peace was made between God and mankind, and man and mankind. Man with himself, man with his neighbors, and man with God, and God with man. A tremendous power of the blood of Jesus. The blood that has power and ability to create peace in the hearts of troubled human beings. And so, again, we've got to do really a study on the blood of Jesus. Uh, and again, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, we see the blood has the cleansing power. The blood of Jesus cleansing power. And he says here in Hebrews 9, 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place, once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more, again that phrase, how much more, shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Power of the blood. The blood has cleansing power. Cleanse your conscience. And so, uh, from dead works. The power of the blood of Jesus. No notice in 1 John chapter 1 and uh, verse 7, again, uh, uh, John testifies of the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We see it in verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Power of the blood of Jesus the cleansing power. Apply that blood, blood to your mind from dead works. Apply that blood from to your sins. The blood of Jesus has the power to wash us and cleanse us. And again, finally, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, we are talking about the blood has a redeeming power. You know what to redeem means? To redeem means to purchase a possession. Uh, we say purchased possession. You buy something from someone for someone else. Let me say that again. To redeem means you buy something from someone for somebody else. And that's what God in Christ Jesus did. The blood of Jesus has the redeeming power, meaning God, through the blood, was able to. Now, remember, all of these things that has happened through Jesus are legal actions. God couldn't just do 
things as he desires without legally take a, a, an action. But otherwise, God would be unjust. So what God did in Christ through the blood of Jesus, he purchased us from the powers of darkness. Colossians uh, 1.13 says, he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, through whom we have redemption, purchased possession. And we see this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. See, uh, that was uh, part of that redemption was from this aimless or, or useless conduct uh, that God redeemed us from. But uh, uh, that we received from your Father. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You know how some people are, are formed in their traditions. They, just, they, they can come away from it. Have you seen Catholic people, for instance, they do the cross. It's really hard for them. Even those who get saved, they still do that when they go to church. Or other traditions. Uh, I've seen uh, among uh, uh, believing Jews still keep Sabbath. And, or some, some of the feasts and so on and so forth. And they're stuck in it. They're, they just can't come away from it. Some traditions, people are just stuck in it. The Bible says that Jesus' blood has the power to purchase us from all of those aimless conduct that we receive from our fathers. Conduct that absolutely has no spiritual values whatsoever today. No matter how they describe it, no matter what they say about it, no matter how many books they write about it, it has absolutely no spiritual power. Did it? If it did, Paul would write it in his letters, in his epistles about him. Because, again, Paul says, I've laid the foundation. So if it's not in the foundation, you can, you can go on and build on it. You're wasting your time. But the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse people from all those dead works. I'm telling you, there are a lot of dead works within the church today. A lot of dead philosophies, ideologies, a lot of dead theologies that has absolutely no spiritual values whatsoever. But Jesus, His blood has the power to redeem us. I believe once we hear the truth, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But what is the force that causes this translation? Transformation is the blood of Jesus. And so... These are some of the uh, uh, application of the blood of Jesus that we need to apply it in our lives. And thank God for what Jesus has accomplished for us. Again, that blood had a purpose. It had an aim. And we just studied about six or seven of, of these uh, goals, uh, six altogether uh, today, what the blood could do for us. The blood has a possessive power. The blood has a drawing power. The blood has an access power. The blood has peacemaking power. The blood has the cleansing power. And the blood has a redeeming power. Uh, and we sing, there is power, power in the blood of the Lamb. And so we sing that. But do we understand what we sing? Where is, where is, where is that blood aiming today? What is that blood doing today? It's claiming and it's purchasing and it's drawing and it's making peace today and tremendous uh, drawing from heaven, blessings from God through the blood of the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you tonight in Jesus' precious name for this opportunity again to study your word. And Lord, we ask you to... Uh, Give rest to everyone this weekend, in Jesus' name. And Lord, that your word may go forth and bring tremendous results and clarity and understanding and wisdom. We give you all glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' wonderful and precious name, 
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I love you. The Lord bless you. Again, thank you for your support of our broadcast into the Middle East. Uh, the word of God going forth and, and touching so many lives. We appreciate you guys and looking forward to seeing you next week. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful week. Amen. For more of Pastor Reza's teachings and materials, please visit our website at www.rezasafa.com. Beloved of the Lord, what a tremendous time. Today, it's really the day of salvation. Tens of thousands of Muslims for the first time in the history of the church are coming to the Lord. We get so many calls every week on one hour program. Many are coming to the Lord. Many are getting healed and delivered. Those of you who are not a partner, I encourage you, please, would you go to the phone and call that number on your screen and say, Pastor Razor, Brother Razor, Razor, I'd like to become a partner with you in reaching the Muslim world. There are so many cries going to heaven and we need your help to make that a reality for millions of souls. Looking forward to hearing from you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.